Hi everybody, it's good to see you. I'm Brandon Shanks on a very busy Saturday afternoon. We are starting with some special coverage of Hurricane Hillary, a Category 3 hurricane heading for California. I'm going to get to the very latest track just out from the National Hurricane Center in just a moment, but also happening in California and people in Hillary's path are getting ready for what could be a catastrophic storm. So we're going to begin right there. Hurricane Hillary is now a Category 3 and expected to bring catastrophic and life-threatening flooding to parts of California, Nevada, and parts of Mexico as well. Southern California is now under a tropical storm warning as residents are bracing for what could be the first storm to make landfall in this area, get this, since 1939. You can see that thing churning towards the state on your screen. NBC's Guad Venegas is on the ground for us in California, uh, San Diego. Uh, but I want to start with Michael Brennan, the director of the National Hurricane Center. Michael, start us off with what you're seeing this hour and what the track is for Hurricane Hillary. Is it going to weak, as some reports are saying? How dangerous could this storm really be? The storm is pretty much still on track. You know, not much has changed since yesterday. So we're very confident that Hillary, as it moves northward and approaches Baja California and moves into Southern California tomorrow and tomorrow night, is going to bring you know life-threatening flooding. And 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 from a wind perspective, even as the winds weaken, as we're starting to see them come down now, that has almost nothing to do with how much rainfall uh, is going to occur and the impacts of that that flooding that's going to occur in portions of Southern California. We can actually see there's rainfall out well in advance of the center of Hillary already falling in. Portions of southeastern California, southwestern Arizona, and into southern Nevada. So, folks, this is the day to prepare if you're in southern California, southern Nevada, anywhere in this high risk, moderate risk area that you see in, in yellow and, 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 excuse me, in pink or purple and red on this map. This is a very dangerous situation that's going to be uh, play out over the next 24 to 36 hours with the potential for that life threatening flooding uh, in uh, the Imperial Valley, Los Angeles, San Diego, up to Las Vegas, and into central Nevada. What are your biggest concerns surrounding the flooding? Uh, how, how much could it possibly uh, be surging? Are we looking at surges like we see on the East Coast many times? Um, not as much in the way of storm surge here on the West Coast with this particular system. This is going to be flooding from rainfall, but it's Got it's it. very different out here in the West. Uh, you know, three to six inches of rain, isolated amounts as high as 10 inches falling in the mountains and the desert could lead to really fast runoff, flash flooding, flooding in places that don't usually flood uh, in a scenario like this. So this is a very dangerous situation. People want to be very in tune to the weather and be in a safe place by tonight and try to ride the storm out. Hey, tomorrow. Michael. Hey, uh, just quickly, because I'm about to show some live pictures from Cabo right now. Take a look at some of the elements where is the storm right now at this moment sure right now the storm is is passing to the west of cabo san lucas it's moving okay. quickly now to the north northwest going to go near or over portions of like punta eugenia on the west coast of baja and then move up into southern california by tomorrow evening got it all right so we are seeing some of that beginning to come in there some of the video i was just showing you as michael was just speaking with us well michael i know you have a lot ahead of you i appreciate you taking the time to speak with us thank you for coming on and Guad, I'm coming to you now. Folks there are seeing a storm like this. They haven't seen this in quite some time. How are they preparing? Most of the people here have never been through a tropical storm, right? So you can see a lot of the residents behind me filling up some of these sandbags. The city of San Diego and the county has set up a lot of locations like this one. We've seen trucks drop more and more of the sand and residents come in all day to fill up some of these bags and protect their property. Now, for some of the people, at least here in the San Diego area, uh, that live in low areas where it floods when it usually rains, uh, they do have an idea of what could happen if we get the amount of rain that uh, is being uh, forecasted. Now, uh, California, Southern California, has different geographies, right? There's areas that are more deserts, there's mountains, there's low areas. So residents do have an idea of what their neighborhood would be like under rain. So a lot of the people coming here today tell me they live in neighborhoods that they know can flood. And authorities, of course, are mentioning the flooding. It's one of the most dangerous things about this storm. Most people, as you mentioned, have never experienced this amount of rain. So they have no idea what it'll be like. Uh, here's part of a conversation I had with some residents about how they're preparing. I've lived here all my life. I'm 62 years old, and this is the first time I've heard of a tropical storm coming in, and everybody's preparing for it. We're just making sure to prepare for the worst because we don't know what this hurricane can, um, can cause. It could cause, you know, our electricity to go out. It can cause this to happen for who knows how long. So we're going to be stocking up on food, um, extra water, just so, you know, in case that does happen, you know, we're going to be prepared. 
And Yasmin, specifically for the areas in Los Angeles and San Diego, these are areas where there's a large homeless population. So authorities are also paying attention to individuals that are on the streets, especially people that camp near the rivers or the creeks who have to be moved because these are the areas of danger with that possible flooding happening that would begin tomorrow. So today is the day to prepare. Authorities recommending people to buy water, buy food. Also make sure that they know how to look up the latest uh, information on their phone have those alerts ready because that's very important for people to know what is coming. And another thing, Yasmin, that's interesting, as we see the storm coming this way for people here in San Diego, yeah. we will have an opportunity to see what happens south of the border and other urban areas where the storm will hit before San Diego. That's the Tijuana and Ensenada area. So we will be paying attention to see what the storm does there before it moves up into Southern California. Hey, hey, Guad, uh, do we know, have we heard from authorities as to whether or not any kind of situation is in place for folks to evacuate if, in fact, they need that? So we've heard authorities are trying to evacuate the homeless population and some areas offer somewhere where they could be inside, but there isn't a specific plan for someone who lives in a low area to go to a shelter right now. What they're asking residents is to have a plan with a friend or a relative, a place where they could move to if the flooding comes to their neighborhood. For now, what people know is that they can come pick up sandbags and then use these to try to protect their property as best as possible. But I think overnight and into tomorrow morning, we're going to have a better idea of what's going to happen once the storm gets here. All right, Guadalvanegas for us there. Thank you so much. And we're going to continue to cover Hurricane Hillary here on MSNBC. If you are in the path, be sure to stay informed and stay prepared as to what's coming. All right, coming up on the show, uh, former President Trump is not going to attend the upcoming Republican debate in favor of an interview with Tucker Carlson or someone like him. Coming from sources, our conversation on that coming up in hot classrooms are impairing students' learning and health conditions amid these record temperatures across the country. A very busy Saturday. Braden Shakes Reports continues after this break.